Okay, so here we are in uh, Lecture 9, Chapter 2. We're transitioning into eukaryotic cells. And so, as we've talked about with regards to this idea of cell theory, most organisms are composed of many cells that work together. And the smallest subunit of life is, of course, the cell. Each cell in an organism is going to, in the, within a multi-cell organism, is going to function independently or basically be responsible for doing something for the good of the whole. And that's one of the more important pieces for, or more, more important reasons for why cells need to learn who they are and what they need to be doing. Because in a body like ours, all of those cells are not actually doing all the things that a body needs. Um, they specialize in certain functions and basically all work together towards keeping the organism alive, us. So let's think a little bit about uh, just eukaryotic cells in a general sense. Some of this will be reminders of things that you did at a uh, intro level. Eukaryotic cells tend to be characterized by some kind of compartmentalization inside. Um, not every cell has every organelle that you probably would have learned about, but um, or probably more specifically, what you will find more often would be that uh, eukaryotic cells are going to have more or less extensive organelles depending on their function. So for example, some cells might have a lot of smooth ER versus other cells that have uh, more rough ER depending on what the function of that cell is. Um, basically, the uh, features that we associate with eukaryotic cellular life, and remember eukaryo is a term that's talking about true nucleus, meaning that it has a nuclear envelope inside, so that goes with the organelles and compartmentalization as well. Information tends to be stored in molecules of DNA, and most of the time that is plural, and that's what will differentiate this from something like a bacteria that usually has a single piece of DNA inside as its chromosome. Information is of course used to create RNAs and proteins and those proteins as we've discussed are going to carry out most of the functions that we will talk about. The construction of a cell is modular as we've talked about with increasingly larger structures being built from smaller subunits. Cellular processes and behaviors are carried out controlled by complex interactions between those molecules. We've talked about those. They are usually non-covalent and can be very specific, but also very transient and will allow cells to respond in real time to what's going on around them. Cellular components will move in and out and around inside through both active and passive mechanisms. And these will come in various forms. So remember active requires some kind of an energy input, usually goes against the gradient. So it goes from high to low. Well, high to low would be passive, low to high would be active. And this can be something like a channel protein or a pump protein that moves one thing at a time, or we could be talking about larger, moving larger volumes of uh, material, something like endocytosis or exocytosis. Uh, prokaryotic cells don't have the ability to do any of those kinds of things. Biological membranes were, are going to exist within the cell as an interconnected continuous flow. And this one's kind of, you got to think about the functions of these organelles within the, the cell because the, obviously those organelles are independent, but what you need to be thinking of here is that the, it's really the smooth ER that's responsible for creating membranes and those phospholipid bilayers that the smooth ER creates can basically it'll come off as a little vesicle and then move through the cell and fuse with some of those other organelles to maintain them. So even something like a, a plasma membrane or the outer membrane of a mitochondria, those membranes would be constructed from materials that came in and were put into membranes by the smooth ER. Uh, cellular metabolism attains a relatively stable state or stable steady state of continuous intense activity what you guys would probably be familiar with in other courses is homeostasis so 
equilibrium is really not a good condition for a cell to be in because that means that things have stopped moving. In the case of a cell, bodies and cells work very hard to make sure that things don't change much. So, for example, the oxygen levels in our body shouldn't really actually drop below a, a certain level without getting us in trouble. But what's our body doing constantly to try to maintain those oxygen levels? We breathe, and that takes energy. So even things that we may do passively and keeps movement going, we have to put a lot of work into just to maintain those steady and stable states. Cells are constantly altering their behavior in order to respond to signals from other cells. So especially within our bodies, we need to respond to what cells are doing around us. And we may be needing to respond to environmental conditions. In some animals, they respond to the external environment. You and I will respond to external environment in some ways. But uh, we also have to respond to what we call the biological environment, which is the area that surrounds our cells and is created by those cells themselves. So hormone comes along, I have to do something different. That would be a cell altering its behavior because of something that it sees outside. So here's a figure you're probably familiar with, and I just, I kind of like this one, put it in here because all these little uh, boxes help remind you of all the different organelles that are out there and largely what they're responsible for. Certainly not a whole lot of detail here. And the ones that we're going to spend most of our time on are going to be this one, the cytoskeleton. Um, we'll talk about the cytosol and the plasma membrane. We'll talk about the nucleus and all of its components, so nuclear pore, nucleus, nuclear envelope, nucleolus, and chromatin, or the chromosome. We'll talk about those. We'll see the centrosome come out when we do division. And what's not in this picture is everything outside the cell, what we call the exocytic matrix. So we're not going to look at some of these others. We won't worry about the ER and the mitochondria and the lysosome and others. We're going to pro focus primarily on these. Um, that'll be basically the remainder of this chapter will be to get a feel for the plasma membrane, the nucleus, the cytoskeleton, and the matrix, go through their structure and obviously see how their structure relates to function and of course what's important for us is looking at how that function is going to work itself out through the developmental process. Okay, so next time we'll start with the plasma membrane and go from there. Bye.